Germany is rolling out new antivirus measures in Berlin. The country was doing better than anywhere else in Europe for a while, but it's hit a record high in daily cases since the spring. And not everyone's happy with the new restrictions. RT's Peter Oliver picks up the story. Strict coronavirus measures are coming back to Berlin from this Saturday until at least the end of the month. All bars, restaurants, local shops or any other business that would be open late at night will have to shut their doors at 11pm until 6 in the morning. Covid cases are rising in Germany at the fastest pace since mid-April as Europe struggles with a new wave of infection. The health minister says the new rules are needed because people are not taking the virus seriously. It isn't a problem with the lack of rules. It is more a question of where certain rules are enforced. And I think there is room for improvement in our beautiful capital city. Beautiful to be sure. But what do Germans make of the new measures? We want that to stop and that we in Germany have this freedom, democratic basic order again, which has always formed the basis for our society. I think keeping everybody safe is the best choice here. Yeah. Definitely. They're doing the right thing, I'm sure. In my opinion, this is a disproportionate reaction that we encounter every day in our basic rights. Protective measures are more important because otherwise the economy cannot function. The Chancellor has warned that with winter on the way, things may be about to get tough. We learned a lot and did well throughout the summer, but we know that more difficult times are ahead of us, namely in the autumn and winter months. And we see a gradual increase, especially in densely populated areas. We have an obvious rise in the numbers of infections. This is of course a reason to be concerned, but we also know how to position ourselves towards it, with certain measures. But there is a small but dedicated group of Germans that don't agree with the Chancellor and have been out on the streets to vent their upset at corona restrictions. <laughs> Other parts of Germany are keeping a close eye on the infection rate in Berlin and aren't keen on visitors from the capital spreading the virus to them. I fear that Berlin is on the edge of losing control. We definitely don't want to have a situation like in Madrid. We don't want a situation like in Paris, where there has to be a complete lockdown, where public life has to be reset to zero. Elsewhere in Europe, Brussels has announced bars and restaurants will close as the Belgian capital is riddled with corona. One in seven people tested in Brussels returns a positive result. The virus is everywhere in the region. There is not a single municipality in Brussels which is below the national average. But where restrictions are put in place, there's also pushback from some sections of society. From conspiracy theorists who think the virus is a hoax, to those terrified that the measures to stop its spread will cost them their jobs. <laughs> While Berlin braces for what may well be a winter wave of COVID, Germany as a whole remains one of only four European nations not described by the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control as being at a crucial rate of infection, for now at least. Peter Oliver, RT Berlin. Well, that was always going to happen as COVID flares up, so do tempers fist flying then over a passenger who refused to wear a mask on a commercial flight. The incident happened on a plane to Utah in the United States. OK, well, the fight started between a flight attendant and a passenger wearing only a face shield. They've been increasingly welcome on board in addition to masks, but crucially not in place of them. Another passenger became involved in the dispute. Well, you can see the end result there, loudly chastising the maskless man. Then security got involved and had to remove the uncooperative passenger. No flying for them. Kate Partridge looks at the problems and that can be caused by a simple protective cover or not. In 
March, there were positive reports of how people around the world were dealing with the coronavirus lockdown. The Italians were singing. The Spanish were dancing. And the British were giving weekly rounds of applause to their National Health Service. Fast forward seven months and the world seems to be going COVID stir crazy. Frustrations at the ongoing restrictions, economic uncertainty and resurging infection rates have driven some tempers to boiling point. And the focus for this anger is often those who don't wear masks. While governments struggle to contain the virus, new hardships have inflamed old tensions. In this instance, two passengers on a UK bus verbally and physically abuse an apparently Asian teenage girl for not covering her face. <laughs> The mask has become synonymous with the pandemic, both as a symbol of protection and also restriction. Science supports using them. Research shows they cut down the chances of transmitting and catching coronavirus and could reduce the severity of any infections. But for some, not wearing masks means freedom from state intervention that's seen few countries get the virus under control, with more than a million dead worldwide. Protesters across the globe are saying, what's the point? And with almost a year gone since the virus first hit the headlines and no end to the crisis in sight, it's this symptom of pandemic fatigue which has led the World Health Organization to warn its threatening country's ability to defeat COVID-19. In such circumstances, it's easy and natural to feel apathetic and demotivated to experience fatigue. We can see, not surprisingly, that fatigue among those surveyed is increasing. It is now estimated to have reached over 60% in some cases. Winter is approaching with its associated colds and flu and the expense of Christmas and other religious celebrations. A time of joy, but also stress. This year's festive season could yet prove to be a powder keg if governments fail to effectively lead societies against an invisible enemy which threatens to divide as well as conquer. Kate Partridge, RT, London. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch us uh, this morning. It's 9.15 Moscow time. This is ahead, that big US vice presidential debate between candidates Kamala Harris and Mike Pence wrapped up then. Hmm. Uh, an unexpected guest stole the show too. More on how it all went, guest aside, uh, when we come back.